Hey guys, it's Jim. Um, I wanted to take a moment and say thanks. I've been having a lot of fun recording these Aurora HDR 2018 tutorial videos. I'm getting a lot of feedback from you all that uh, they're helping, and so I appreciate that. Um, if you haven't yet, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and follow along. I'm going to continue to add more. When I started the series, I thought I was going to do only three videos, and I'm now on video six, and I got a few more planned. So I'm probably going to get to ten or so. I don't know exactly how many, but. Um, the video today is about the tone curve. It's very powerful. It'll let, uh, allow you to adjust contrast, shadows, highlights, and even color. However, it can be really confusing, and so we're going to cover that today. So let's get started. Okay, so here's the, uh, the base HDR image. I already brought it into Aurora and merged it, and here's the tone curve filter in the basic, uh, excuse me, in the filter menu on the right-hand side. Just click on tone curve to open it up, and here we go. Now you get four different dots, and I think of each of these as a tab. Uh, I'm currently in white, and there's a white line you'll notice. There's also a histogram in the background. So if I click on red, there's a red line. Green has a green line. Blue has a blue line, right? So I'm going to go back to the white one for now. You also have three dots at the bottom, and you can move this line. So I'm going to cover all of that. Starting at the bottom here, this black line represents shadows. So if you drag this line, you can compress the shadows and make it darker. You can do the same thing by dragging that yellow point. And conversely, you can go the other way um, using this yellow point and dragging it up to make uh, basically all the shadows disappear, right? So you can go like that uh, or that, and you can move it all around. So there's literally a million things you can do with it. The gray dot corresponds with midtones, and so if you drag it this way, sort of bringing the midtones down, that actually looks really nice. Um, and you can see that the the white line is kind of bowing downward. So I'm, I'm basically making the image darker because I'm taking the midtones down, or if I go this way, I'm making it brighter by bringing the midtones up. So I'm going to hit reset, and this last button, of course, is highlights. So I can go that way, which will bring up the highlights incredibly, or I can grab the, um, the, the yellow dot there to move the highlights um, around in the photo. So that's how it works. Now what most people do on this white tab is drop a point there and a point there. And this one they usually kind of bring down. And this one they usually kind of bring up. And it adds some nice contrast, which helps the colors pop. I mean, it looks very different. Take a look. There's the before, there's the after. And all it did is drop those two things and move the, uh, move the line. Um, that's called an S curve. It's a kind of a gentle S, like the shape of the letter S. And that's why it's called an S curve. But it's a great way to just start getting familiar with the um, curves tool because, or the tone curve, because that's what most people do is just add a gentle S curve. Um, now that's on that tab. So we also have color tabs and they correspond to color. So I'm going to take a detour for a minute and I'm going to bring up the color wheel. This is just a color wheel example. I downloaded off the internet with a Google image search. But the reason I brought it up is we've got red, green, and blue over here. Well, you've got red, green, and blue in the color wheel. However, you can see where red mixes with green, you get a little yellow. Where green and blue mix, you get some cyan. And where red and blue mix, you get magenta. But what we're really concerned about here is what's opposite or across the color wheel from each of these primary colors. Across from red is cyan. So keep that in mind when we're on the red tab. Across from green is magenta. And across from blue is yellow. So we're going to get into these. Now red, remember, across from red is cyan. So I can come in here and I can say, well, I want more red. I'm grabbing the shadows end, right? That bottom left is shadows. Um, or I can say, I want more cyan, right? So that's how you adjust colors. And you can do the same with the highlights, more red and more cyan, right? You can also drop your S-curve in here and make adjustments to get that sort of muted, sort of calmer look. That kind of works well. Now green, if you remember, that's magenta is the opposite. So same kind of thing here. If you start with green, you can go, oh, I want more magenta. I want, you know, you can just move it all around until you get sort of any kind of crazy look, to be honest. And same thing with shadows. You can move it around, up and down and around. But the point is, if you're going towards it, you're getting more green and, and sort of away from the green gets magenta. And then the opposite of the blue is yellow. So as you move this around, you can get more blue or you can get more yellow. And likewise here, right? You can get more blue uh, or more yellow. And so what I generally do is I'll go into these um, uh, different color tabs and just experiment. Like maybe I want more blue in the highlights, so I want to do something like that. But first, maybe I want to start with that basic S-curve. Maybe that's a better place to start, right? 
set your S curve up, get it kind of nice looking with your contrast. Now, say I want a little bit more blue and maybe I want a little bit of pink in the sky. Uh, oops, I'm going towards the green, so you gotta pay attention, right? So kind of away from it, you start getting into kind of those pinker tones. So I don't wanna overdo it, but you know, you can just kind of experiment. Um, and red, if you remember, the opposite of red is cyan. So maybe, you, uh, maybe you know, maybe you could do a little S curve here uh, and experiment with it. But the bottom line is, let me show you, you went from a base HDR that really had uh, no contrast and no color pop to something that's very different in just a matter of moments. Now, you may not like that, that's okay. I'm just experimenting and, and, and playing around just to show you how it works. But you can come up with any number of looks. So uh, you can set your, uh, you know, your S curve here and sort of get that looking good. And then maybe, you know, you want a little bit of pink in the, uh, in that area. And maybe you want a little bit, uh, maybe a little bit more like that, you know, a little bit more dramatic look. Maybe you want a little more blue in the highlights. Uh, and all of a sudden you have a very different looking photo. So there's the before and there's the after. What I highly recommend is if you're not familiar with how the colors, uh, you know, the colors that are opposite of each other on the wheel is finding a graphic like this. You can just do a Google image search, find it easy, but just keep that in mind that the red and cyan are opposite, green and magenta are opposites, and the blue and yellow are opposite because you'll use it a lot when you're playing with the tone curve. And the other thing is just experiment. Get in the tone curve, just screw around with the photo. You don't have to try to make a masterpiece or a beautiful photo out of the gate, <clears throat> excuse me, just get in there, move these sliders around, get a feeling for it, and the more you do it, the more comfortable you'll get with it and the better you'll understand it. Um, now there's one other thing you can do, and that is on this, I'm gonna just clear all this. Uh, sometimes like if you move a bar here, you might, you see how all of this moves. Well, you can drop anchor points here. Let me, let me drop the anchor points first. You can drop anchor points to kind of keep that part of it still. And then when you make these adjustments up here, you're gonna have a more subtle adjustment uh, or move in the, uh, in the uh, light, right? Because you've anchored it. So instead of moving this and getting the whole thing to bow up, you can move you know, just a little bit of it uh, so that you're not having as dramatic of an effect. And so that's something to keep in mind. The bottom line is, as I said, experiment, get familiar with the colors and how they're, you know, what their opposites are for the red and the blue and the green, and then just take some time in the tone curve, experiment, play around, just, just play around with it. It's the best way to learn is just to experiment. And so that's a high level overview of the tone curve. If you have any questions, you know, leave a comment. If you would, if this video is helpful, leave a like, don't forget to subscribe, share this with your friends. And uh, let me know if you have any feedback. If there's any questions, I'll do my best to answer. And I hope that it helps. Hope you're enjoying Aurora as much as I am. And uh, have a good time editing. And don't forget, experiment with the tone curve. It's fun. I think you'll enjoy it. That's it, my friends. Thanks for watching. Keep uh, tuning in. Another video will be coming in a couple of days. And I'll see you then. Thanks again. Adios.